Curtis, you know when the next solar eclipse is? No? I'll just ask Bill Nye the science guy. Hold on, I'll just get him on Twitter. You guys message me a lot, and, and what just took place over there, it's just, just a teensy bit like what happens when you message me because I get questions like, what handlebars fit my bike? And you would think that I would just tell you to Google it, but I'm actually a little bit more sympathetic than you might think because I understand that when you're a beginner, you might not know how to Google it, you might not know what to Google. And so today, I wanna give you sort of a 50,000 foot overview of a bicycle so you can look up your own parts and you know what to actually Google. Just like me asking Bill Nye when the solar eclipse is, there are quicker ways to find things out. Welcome back to Burn Peak, I'm Seth, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. So I acknowledge that bikes can be kind of confusing for a beginner, especially mountain bikes. If you're just beginning to work on your bike and you need, let's say, a set of handlebars, you might've had the experience where you ordered them and then they don't fit on your stem and you quickly realize that there are different sizes that you have to determine before you order things. And some of them are much easier than others. For instance, grips, pretty much, there's just one type of grip and it's gonna fit any handlebar, any mountain bike you have. You can just order grips and be pretty confident that they're going to fit your bike. Another thing like that, pedals. Pretty much all pedals fit mountain bikes. If it's a mountain bike pedal, it's gonna fit your bike. Same thing with a saddle. Uh, I guess valve caps are the only other thing that fit no matter what. So yeah, unless you're looking for pedals or valve caps, you're gonna need to determine what size thing fits your bike and the easiest place to start is the internet. I know, I'm not gonna tell you to Google something, but I'm gonna tell you to go to the manufacturer's website first, before you start taking out calipers and tape measures and trying to measure things, they'll usually tell you almost everything that fits your bike. Here's my Diamondback 5C. If I go down here to specifications, we've got everything laid out on a silver platter. You need to know what type of shock fits your bike. Here's the original one that comes on it. You know the eyelet width, you know the travel, you know everything. But that's not the only place on the internet that you can find answers. There are companies that desperately want to sell you things and so they make it really easy. Here, Wheels Manufacturing, wheelsmfg.com, they have a derailleur hanger finder and they will actually let you select the brand of your bike and go down to the model and the year and they'll, they'll tell you what derailleur hanger fits your bike. Now, sometimes the answer is written on the old part. I'll give you an example, through axles. This just looks like a chunk of metal here, but if you look closely, it has writing on it and it tells me exactly what size the through axle is. Now, on a through axle, you're gonna have the length, you're gonna have the thread pitch. It's just written all here. You don't have to measure it or determine it. Now, if that's scraped away, you can go to the manufacturer's website and find it. Here's another one, your seat post. There it is, 31.6. So now when you get a new seat post, it's gonna be 31.6, but the collar that tightens your seat post down, that's actually gonna be a different size. That's gonna be the diameter of the bike, which is a little bit bigger. Sometimes you're gonna to have to measure stuff. Now, most everything on your bike is gonna be in metric, except for the tires for some reason. So if you need a seat post collar, you're gonna measure the diameter of your seat tube. So here it looks like the diameter is like a tiny bit over 35. So let me Google tiny bit over 35 seat collar. Wait, you're gonna find 35.6 and that's the closest one. You don't need to get super precise measurements with a caliper or anything. Now, there are certain parts that are much harder to measure with a ruler. And so it is nice as you're building your collection of bike tools to get a caliper. Now, this is a really nice caliper, but you can get a crappy caliper on Amazon for probably eight or 10 bucks, and it's gonna get you close enough measurements. Let me give you an example here. A handlebar is pretty tough to measure with a ruler because you're kind of looking down, you don't really know whether it's right. With a caliper, you can just clamp this thing around it, tighten it down, and now you have a much closer measurement. Now, tires are another one where your old tire is gonna have everything written on it, but you might have a question like, hey, 
how wide of tires are gonna fit on my bike. I wanna go for a wider tire. That's one of those things you're gonna have to ask around, maybe do some Google searching and go into some forums because it gets tricky. With certain parts like tires, different manufacturers have a different fit. Like maybe you take a size medium shirt at the Gap, but at, uh, what's another store that sells shirts? But at another store, you take a size large. It's kind of the same with tire width. A 2.4 Schwalbe is really, really big, and then a 2.4 Maxxis isn't so big, and so you're on your own with tires. While tires are pretty simple and straightforward, wheels are not. So first of all, I should hope you're looking for mountain bike wheels in the first place because they're a little bit different than road wheels and BMX wheels and things like that. If you have any question of what size the wheel is, just look at the tire, 27.5. That tells us what the wheel size is. Now there are rear hubs and front hubs, and that's important because if you're just buying one wheel to maybe replace a bent one, you have to know whether it's a rear wheel or a front wheel. A front wheel just has a mount for your disc brake rotor, and then your rear wheel has a spot to put your cassette. And on most mountain bikes, you're gonna have either an HG driver or an XD driver. This is gonna fit SRAM cassettes. You can see there are these little splines down at the bottom and then some threads. This is gonna fit Shimano type cassettes. That's HG, and it's just kind of a continuous spline with a little tiny one. Now, if we flip the wheel around here, this is a six bolt and there's also center lock. It's pretty easy to tell which one you have. If your rotor bolts on with six little bolts here, then you have six bolt bolt on rotors. And if there's kind of a little spline and a lock ring, that's center lock. Now, it pains me to say that the width of the wheel is actually the most complicated part. It should be really simple, but they went ahead and created like 85 different standards. And when you have that many standards, it's not a standard anymore, it's just a hodgepodge. But most mountain bikes these days are Boost 148. But check the manufacturer's specifications if you have any questions. And before I did mention the cassette, now you have to make sure that whatever cassette you get, first and foremost, has the same number of cogs as the old one, or it's not gonna run on your drivetrain. You also have to get the correct brand. So you're gonna need either an HG cassette for Shimano, TRP, MicroShift, basically everything, or you're gonna need an XD cassette, SRAM, for SRAM. But like I said, the most important thing is the number of cogs on the cassette. This is a 12-speed cassette, and so you're gonna use a 12-speed derailleur, 12-speed shifter, all that stuff. Even a 12-speed chain. So yeah, I'm very happy to report that chains are one of the easiest things to order for your bike because all you have to do is count the number of cogs in your cassette. If it's a 12 speed, you need a 12 speed chain. If it's, if it's 10 speed, you need a 10 speed chain. And that's it. Now here's another one that's pretty easy. Brake rotors. Brake rotors, you have, first of all, how they mount. So you're either gonna have center lock or six bolt and you have the diameter of the rotor itself. Now, the other thing is the brand. You're not really supposed to mix brands. You can, and it'll usually work, until it doesn't. And so, if you don't wanna leave anything up to guesswork, then just get the same brand rotor as you had before. So, you bend your rotor, you smoke your rotor, get the diameter, the bolt pattern, and the brand. So I'm holding here a derailleur hanger. Now let's say this was all bent up and you wanted to order some spares. Uh, how are you gonna find out what it is? Well, first of all, I showed you you can go on Wheels Manufacturing's website and they'll tell you what derailleur hanger fits your bike. Or you can use this little hack I'm about to show you. Okay, so first you're gonna take the derailleur hanger and you're gonna put it down on a surface that's sort of all one color. Here in the Google app, there's actually a picture of a camera. You press it. And now it says search with your cameras. Yup, look at that. Whole bunch of them came up. Now here on the old Amazon, they want $40 for this derailleur hanger? That is highway robbery. Now there are certain parts on your bike that are so complex that you need a part for a part. Like, let's say your suspension fork, you're gonna need volume tokens, service kits, oil, all that stuff. 
great thing about suspension forks is a whole bunch of stuff written on it. You can tell exactly what type of fork you have. You can go to the website and especially companies that make suspension forks like SRAM and Fox and Olin's, they have all sorts of service information on their sites. They have pretty much the most in-depth service information of any bike part available. And so all you need to do is figure out what type of fork you have and you can find out everything about it. So are we leaving a lot of stuff out? Absolutely, but if we didn't leave anything out, this video would be going on for nine or 10 days. And I wanted to give you a basic overview and get you more comfortable Googling it instead of asking me. So I'm honestly touched that people look to me for bike information. There's just simply no way for me to help all of you. And honestly, I would be Googling a lot of things for you. And so, Anybody that sends us messages like that from now on, we're, we're probably just gonna link to this video. And if your friend has a question, you can just link to this video as well. And so I hope it lives here on the internet as a valuable resource for new mountain bikers. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something today. And if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.